Hello and welcome to CineTracer 2 version 0.5.0. This is a pretty large update and in this video we're going to be looking at the new camera workflow using the floating camera and the new shot list tool. But let's look at the new camera, the floating camera. Uh, after testing I have discovered that this camera is not deletable. So apologies on that. Next update I'll make it so that you can delete this camera. I do have to implement that and I forgot to add that to this camera. So we're going to take it over. And this camera is rather unique. Let's look at some of the controls. So on the bottom is like you'd expect exposure. Um, we'll bring it down a little bit. And just for fun, I just like working in anamorphic. I never get to do it in real life, so at least I can do it virtually. And so we have some slightly different things going on here. Uh, on the left, you can see that to autofocus, you can left click. And it'll try. Uh, it's going to focus to the background. We have to click her body. Autofocusing on metahumans will be changing eventually and we roughly have our focus. Next importantly is enter. You hit enter to create a shot and that is how you save a shot. Really important, I'm gonna hit enter. There's a little preview of it. My picture in pictures over it, sorry my face, but that is saved here in my documents folder. And we're gonna look at how you look at shots that you create in just a bit. Uh, panning and tilting is the mouse uh, or controller and moving is just like a first person camera. Not much different there. But what is different now is that this camera can do a third axis. It took me a little bit, the third, the third axis. So right now it's set up for camera boom and it says space and shift. So space goes up, shift goes down, kind of like Minecraft. On this camera only for now, if you hit tab, it now says roll. So now space is going to roll me this way. Shift is going to roll me the other way. What if I want to go back? Because this is sort of an, it's a, you don't do this for very many shots. It's sort of a special thing. You can hit T and it'll snap you back this way. And what if you are, like me, forced into producing videos that are vertical formats? If you're close to the um, 90 degree point like this and you hit T, it will snap you to 90 degrees. Now, your mouse isn't really going to take this into account. So operating this is rather inverted and funny. So it might take a long time to figure out where your frame is, it's very hard to control unless you flipped your monitor, which I might test out. But anyway, this camera can then roll and we're gonna roll back this way and hit T. And so we've gotten rid of roll. I'm gonna hit tab and now it's booming. So we have roll implemented. It's a little hard to control, but I wanted this camera to be able to do that. Uh, even if it's like not very common. The last new thing about this camera is that you can lock it. So if you hold L, it takes a second, you're gonna see this red box. Now I cannot move and I can't pan. However, the menu still works. So you can still take a camera screenshot with enter and you could still change exposure and whatnot. But now you can't move this camera. So I'm going to hop out again and we'll see that that is the position that we left it. There's a readout on the height automatically and a little bit of data on focal length, iris. That's mostly for depth of field, white balance and focus distance. So a little bit of metadata from out here. Uh, I'm going to go back in and like what would happen is like, oh, I liked this shot, but then you like nudged it and it's like gone. Now you can lock it. I'm going to unlock it though for now. And we're going to pick a different shot so I can illustrate how the new uh, shot list system is working. So we're going to go a little bit more into a profile here. Focus is questionable. Focal length is questionable. 45.6 mils, my favorite. On a zoom lens, it's technically possible, right? Uh, anyway, I am going to lock the camera for no reason and then hit enter again. And my picture in picture will again cover the screenshot, but it's it's in there, it's in your My Documents folder. So that is the new control system uh, for the camera. And we have uh, a new camera position that you can see here. So how do we review shots now? It's very different. And how do you save the project? These are very important things that we need to understand now uh, in this update, how this works. I'm gonna hit G. So this is now um, where we're going to review shots. It's a shot list tool. Anything that you do in first person, mostly we're gonna be calling a tool. So the shot list tool comes out and we'll see this brand new UI at the bottom. There still needs to be a little bit more like data added to this, but that is the shot we just took. And the scene that took it, if that makes sense, that camera position, this whole scene should be loaded in. If I hit Q, it's gonna load our other shot. Not much changed as far as the scene, but the camera did change position that you can see there. And so now we can load between these different setups and we have a very simple way of looking at it. The light stand likes to be highlighted. I don't know why when it loads back in, 
there's still a lot of things to work out with the system. But overall, this was um, an important step to get to this uh, part in Cinetracer 2. This, a lot of this, this right here has been like a big part of the vision. It's like this like really simple storyboard system at the bottom with a camera that has metadata. So this is the new floating camera and the new shotless system. I would definitely give this a shot. This really is like the uh, vision for the cameras uh, in the game so far, as far as like stop motion style, no, no animation yet. That will be coming in its own way. Let's go back to the hand tool. And so right now we've saved those different shots and the states of the scene, but we haven't saved the project. And this is a little different now. We're going to hit tab and then we're going to hit E and we're in our save menu. I'm trying to make this more straightforward for myself, for everybody. But what happens on a new project is it's going to be called default project. You could save it and you just always have a project named default project. But what if we want to change the name? We're going to click it and I'm going to call this one kitchen demo. I think I have several of these. A, I don't know. I'm going to hit accept. So now we've changed the name, but we haven't actually saved it yet. This is could be more straightforward. I'm still working on it. Then you click save. At least it says save project successful. So that's nice. And how do we load that back in is over here. This is a brand new load menu. Uh, it is now mouse supported and controller supported, but I think most people use the mouse. And there it is, kitchen demo A that we just made. Uh, let's try loading this bedroom scene in. We'll come back. Okay. So I've loaded a little bedroom test scene I was making before, uh, and we'll go back to the previous scene. It should give you a little bit of a progress bar, like tell you that it's loaded. It's a little bit of a weird silent procedure happening behind the scenes, but there we go. We've loaded it back in. So that is creating a new shot using the floating camera, reviewing it using the shot list tool, and then saving it and loading it using our new menu up here that is again mouse supported now. So that wraps it up for our look at the new camera shot list, saving menu workflow and inventory menu. All of those things got updated quite a bit. That is the 0.5 update. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions on this workflow. You can't delete the floating camera. I'm going to make it deletable next time. And then again, if you have any must have lights uh, that you'd like to see in this, which we'll have all of them someday, but you know, what are the ones that you want first? I definitely will take that into account as I decide what to be making in the next couple of months. I'll see you on the next video.